the Attitude Awards. It's a chance to celebrate the achievements of people who live with disability and acknowledge those who support and enhance the lives of the disabled community. Over the past 12 years, we've honoured some extraordinary people. From world leaders to local change makers, sporting idols to school teachers. As a finalist that was always taught to say no and no was okay, tonight I'd like to dedicate this award to everybody that said yes in my life. I believe that we are celebrating people expressing humanity's greatest quality, our ability to adapt. You all believed in me and kept reminding me to believe in myself and that's what makes a difference. Y-O-U, O and only, L, I, live, O and once, B, but, I, space, W, A, was, L, U, lucky. And if we can change attitudes one home at a time, one street at a time, one school at a time, then we're well on our way to being a sincerely kind society. Let's all, let's all keep speaking up and doing the best that we can and be ourselves. Cheers. I have been labelled many things over my life, but never winner. So who will be winning in 2019? Let's take a look at some of this year's finalists. This next song's called Rain, and it's all about how I hate rainy days. Every successful rock band needs a charismatic frontman. Meet Corey Newman. Sit Down In Front is the name of the band. I'm just the guy who stands out the front and yells at people. In one of the toughest industries to break into, Corey and his mates have smashed down the door and are now one of New Zealand's hottest acts. We apparently sounded like the Wiggles at first. People used to call me Yellow Wiggle. I kid you not, in a rock band, that's not a good look. Now people compare us to the Sex Pistols, which is kind of cool. Born two months premature, Corey spent his first three months in intensive care and was diagnosed with cerebral palsy, ADHD and epilepsy. Some people affect their speech. Oh. I'm lucky in the sense it doesn't affect mine at all, if anything. Probably my inability to shut up. School days pre-band were tough. In the very early days, I didn't have many friends. I was about as popular at school as a snail in a salad bar. Two years ago, Corey and his mates formed Sit Down In Front. They are now Gisborne legends. This year, they came third in the National Secondary School Smoke Free Rock Quest and were asked to be the opening act for Jimmy Barnes' New Zealand tour. No one has phoned the cops on us yet. There was one lady who rang my mum and yelled at her down the phone, but the community in Gisborne is amazing. And shout out to the people there Gizzy Hard, Let's Rock. If you have a disability and you're nervous to get out there and to try an adventure sport, trust me, <laughs> look at me. I'm a C5 tetraplegic. <laughs> Use me as your key. Kiwi adrenaline junkie Jezza Williams has always pushed his limits. He was working as a canyoning guide in Switzerland when he slipped off a rock and sustained a spinal injury. You know, a lot of people, they break themselves. Good old Jezza. Mm, tetraplegia complete. <laughs> Not much hand function, um, no wrist function upwards, mm, yeah, no triceps. So, uh, yeah, basically down from here is autopilot. Born and raised in the South Island, Jezza had New Zealand's adventure playground as his backyard. Every day after school, if it wasn't going down to the river, it was cruising over to the climbing wall to Beautiful Valley, this limestone rock, to play around and 
I got an addiction for pushing the limits and the limits were right there on my doorstep, so definitely got amongst it real early. Through his business making tracks, he's now sharing his experience and passion for adventure. He educates tourist operators and showcases how to make adventures accessible. So what Making Tracks does is I go into outdoor companies, I look at their product and I make it possible through education, adaptation, cooperation and training. And I've also got a really awesome body that can prove a point. Because if this body can do it, anybody can do it. I've been doing this stuff for a very long time <laughs> and I've never hurt myself. Oh wait. Once. <laughs> Hola, me llamo Carlos Bigon, Carlos Bigon Meriles. Yo he nacido en Bolivia, pero he crecido aquí en Nueva Zelanda. Carlos Bigerman likes to challenge perceptions. Carlos is a professional photographer with exhibitions in New Zealand, Bolivia, and an upcoming exhibition in France. I look the contrast, the lighting the texture, the atmosphere, and it has to be sort of million. People with Down syndrome face a number of challenges, including speech and learning difficulties. When Carlos moved from Bolivia to New Zealand, he had to make new friends and learn a new language. Carlos now speaks three languages, English, Spanish and Portuguese. He's completed two courses in French at the University of Otago and can now also understand German. My next one is Italian. I have no idea of how many, ling of how many languages will I able to speak, but I will break this barrier into limits. Carlos runs Otago's Down Syndrome Association. He is a competitive swimmer and writes for Chat21 magazine. He's presented at both national and international conferences, including the World Down Syndrome Congress in Glasgow. It doesn't matter if it's photography like me or languages, if you love something, let's do it with love, with perseverance, with dedication. I think working for the Halberg Foundation is the best way to have job satisfaction. How can you not be happy with what you do when just getting to see all the kids smiling and to see how much enjoyment they get from coming along to this event, it's definitely a feel-good moment. Even as she was coping with the intense demands of her Paralympic swimming career, Rebecca Dubbin knew she needed to also plan for a career post-sport. Early morning starts were juggled with lectures and assignments. Sport has influenced my career because it taught me a lot about discipline and giving things 100% even when you don't feel 100% and being able to apply that to my day-to-day -day job, I feel like that's really helped me succeed. Rebecca secured a media internship with ANZ Bank and is now employed by the Halberg Foundation. She's in a key role in marketing, communications and social media, promoting Halberg's nationwide events. Rebecca's knowledge of sport and disability provides Halberg with valuable insight into how to better deliver programs to support young people with disabilities. I think my career highlight is this. It's the Halberg Games, the families that we've called and talked to about profile opportunities, the social media that we've implemented, and all the work we've done with media to make sure that they get the content they need to go out and promote what we're doing here this weekend. Working with Levi is so different to any other client I've met. I'm gonna stretch out your body. I kind of look at him like a little brother. He's very sweet. 24-year-old Leah Stewart knew from an early age she wanted to care for others. As a rehabilitation coach and carer, she works with adults and children with complex needs. Five-year-old Levi has severe cerebral palsy. Levi has 24-hour care and he has two people looking after him all the time, so I'm part of a big team of people. We do a lot of sensory work with Levi. Oh, good boy. He has a vision impairment and he has sensory abnormalities, so that sensory input for him is really important. <laughs> Leah was at high school when she was asked to support a girl who had quadriplegic cerebral palsy. Maths tuition led to an enduring friendship with Alicia. Together, they have traveled to New York, Miami, and the Bahamas. 
Leah pushed a wheelchair, pulled a suitcase, and carried a shower chair on her back. Leah's expert care has also helped her niece reach milestones well ahead of medical predictions. She has a vision impairment. It's really amazing for me that I can use my experiences to help get her moving and get her happy on her tummy and those kind of things. I think this is the dream job. And to feel like you're never working a day in your life because you're doing something that you genuinely love so much, you know, I just wish that everyone could have that. We feel that we can create a place where everyone is valued, where everyone has a place, um, without having to ashamed about their disability. The Cookie Project is a social enterprise with a winning recipe. Founders Eric and Graham provide paid work experience for people with disabilities. We've got 35 bakers now working for us on the, on the books. We have a huge variety of bakers with different disabilities. We have everyone from Down syndrome to autism. Every single one of them has something so special to bring to the kitchen. So when you pick up one of these bags of cookies from our amazing friends at New World, scan the back of the packaging with the QR code, find out exactly who made your cookies. Eric and Graham met when Eric was delivering a speech to the migrant community. And that's why I found out, wow, he is the most kind-hearted man in New Zealand because he adopted four kids, in which three of them actually have disabilities. He was struggling financially and also emotionally. I knew I need to do something to help this man. A few weeks later, I gave him some cookies to try. I said, hey, these are good, but let's make it better by putting in the best butter. And the best butter, of course, is by Louis for Creamery, right? So we did, and then after a few months later, um, we got to try them again, and it's just like, wow, this is amazing. This is the future now for you and your children. Sales volumes have never been their KPI. They measure success on the social impact of their cookies. It's a success uh, that Graham and I, we never thought of before. It really brings tears to, to our eyes. Cookies! Halfway. AJ has turned her passion for fitness into a successful business, Wheelie Active. The name Wheelie Active came up as a joke. I just thought it was really funny and I kept it. <laughs> a self-confessed sports junkie, AJ played rugby league for Sydney and Christchurch. A fall from a balcony left her paralysed. AJ focused first on her own recovery. She then studied to become a personal trainer. Now she's found her niche, training other disabled men and women. I know it works for me. And in the past, I've been pretty terrible to my body. <laughs> yeah, we've all been young. And once I started taking care of myself through health and fitness, I just thought I was on cloud nine and I wanted everyone to feel like that as well. AJ's now on the lookout for someone she can coach to Paralympic glory. With people with disabilities, I want them to learn something new every time they come. Not just a skill, but learn something new about themselves. Just saying that I can and I am able. I didn't know I could do that before, but yay, I can do it now because I've already tried it with AJ. Can I see? <laughs> James Wilson likes to weigh into things with passion. James was the only powerlifter to represent New Zealand in the Special Olympics, World Games in Abu Dhabi 2019. Keep practising and practising and getting four silver medals at the World Games. James follows a strict nutritional plan. When he won a challenge at his local gym, he suggested he run a series of workshops to encourage other athletes to eat, stretch and warm up correctly. As a global ambassador with Special Olympics, James delivers speeches at public events to fundraise and promote Special Olympics. Good being a leader because you can check, make sure people are always being nice to other people and you make sure people are happy. James loves describing his journey from waterboy to international heavyweight. I'm um, saying that you can do it and don't um, let anyone tell you you can't because you get to be second in the world and you can tell everyone that you can do it. Gabby Wright had a vision of playing for the Silver Ferns. I played for a school club and I made it into the rep team when I was year seven. My dream was to become a Silver Fern. Um, 
but obviously that idea changed. She was playing representative netball when she was diagnosed with transverse myelitis, an inflammation that impacts nerves of the spinal cord. Determined to find another way to satisfy her goal, she trained as a netball umpire. Well, after realising that I probably wouldn't be able to play netball again, um, I still wanted to find a way to involve myself. And the idea of umpiring came up and I decided to give it a go. Gabby headed to the court on cold winter days to umpire at the Howick Pakaranga Netball Centre as New Zealand's first wheelchair umpire. In my future, I would love to keep umpiring and umpire at a high level. I would also love to become an architect so I can make our community accommodate more for people with disabilities. Welcome! Bruce Pico is the Kiwi King of peanut butter. He's spread worldwide. Pick started his peanut butter brand to sell at markets in Nelson, but the operation outgrew his home garage. I started making peanut butter because I got really cross with the milk I was buying, with sugar in it in particular. Pix now produces 25,000 jars a day. We have a, a remarkable team of people who, you know, love coming to work and, you know, they, they really do their best work. And I love giving people opportunities like that. It's fantastic. Pick has macular degeneration. His sight has continued to deteriorate, but he still likes greeting visitors and working on the factory floor. You know, I've discovered, you know, that I, I can inspire people. So I'm prepared to use whatever I've got to, to try and make this business as good as it possibly can be and make the lives of the people around me as good as they can be. Kirinawa is most proud of his connection to his culture. He is carving a role for himself as an orator in both English and te reo Māori. My passions are anything Māori. So, oh, love my Māori tanga. Born with spina bifida, he pushes himself physically. He teaches kapahaka to the tamariki of Dunedin. I feel like I definitely do have that potential to be a voice for other disabled Māori out there that are struggling with whatever they're struggling with. He's an accomplished singer and has released an album a collaboration with other young artists. And he's an aspiring Paralympic skier. My big goal is to get to the Paralympics and going skiing everywhere around the world, that's one of, that's a big goal of mine. Take your marks, set, go! Big knees, go, swing the arms! As athletics coach for Special Olympics, Nigel Cash prepares his athletes well. You know, it can be a bit tough, but tough coach, good results. Nigel transitioned from being an athlete to coach in 2018. Just for giving back my knowledge gives me the chance to get an athlete successful as I, I did. Concentrate, focus on your running. <coughs> Nigel's been a volunteer for the North Taranaki Club for 28 years. He gives round-the-clock care to his athletes during competitions and manages the technical side of their events. He looks after every detail. He studies the book, the rules. He knows the rules backwards, even though he has reading and writing disability. If there's a rule that I think is wrong, I will soon speak up and voice my opinion. From being a, in a special class at school to being a Special Olympics athlete, and now he's a Special Olympics international coach. He's got to the level he's at now, mainly through determination. A tough taskmaster, Nigel relentlessly seeks improvement. I'm not there for the rewards, I'm just here for to get the athletes to achieve what they would like to achieve, really. I enjoy doing it and the pleasure of doing it. Letitia Tupua tries her best to maintain the professional line of a caregiver, but she winds up embracing all her clients into her whānau. I think it's important because we come in and we get them, you know, up for their day. I also believe that we become their hands and legs in some aspects, and, um, and we do everything for them. So without the support worker coming in, you know, it's going to be very difficult for people with extreme needs. Letitia has been supporting tetraplegic patients for Drake Medox for the past 17 years. Letitia looks after two clients, 
Reuben Harris and Rodney Williams. I suppose I've become part of the family. Rodney's like my family as well. She originally started with me just one day a week, but over a period of time, she's come to now be doing a third of my shifts. I've been doing that for the last 10 years. So, yeah, it's just uh, part of the family. We have a lot of dinner parties. We, we cook, that's something that we both share. I usually call him mum, Chef Ramsey, because sometimes he can be here yeah, like Ramsey, sort of. <laughs> oh, look at that. Sudima so Hotels are leading the way as the only proudly accessible hotel group in Aotearoa. The values here at Sudima Hotel are we care, we do the right thing, and we work together. The lens that we look through is the accessibility lens rather than the disability lens. They employ 24 staff members who identify with access needs and train all staff in unconscious bias and disability awareness. It's just talking about them, what works for them, and we're all individuals, we all have different needs, and it's finding out about what that individual person needs to flourish and do their job well. Sudima so develops a three-year career plan for each staff member. If Iti Hussan is hearing impaired, he began his career with Sudima as a front office manager. Sudima has supported him to study and become a hotel manager. I'm one of the examples here. and uh, I've moved my way from front office manager to general manager. We don't look at any one's shortcoming uh, when it comes to either physical learning or any sort of accessibility need. Sign language interpreters attend staff meetings and the team is encouraged to learn New Zealand sign language. My message to other businesses would be that it's not a tick box. It's not something that you do for the sake of pleasing other people. It's actually really important to ensure that everyone from our community can contribute to and have a meaningful workplace, meaningful life. Jen Hooper began her advocacy work after her daughter Charlie was born. Complications during birth had resulted in disability. I often say that, you know, for a kid that can't see or move, she's changed more lives than anyone that I know. Though she is not formally trained, Jen believes she could help drive change. Jen pioneered Changing Places, which is building fully accessible bathroom facilities and public spaces throughout New Zealand. Society is, is charged, if you like, with providing supports for all of our community. Not almost all. Twenty-eight-year-old Ephraim Gudgeon turned a life-changing accident into positive change in his life. And now he's doing the same for others. I'm never trying to inspire people, but I just... All, yeah, all I can do is just set a good example for them to follow. Ephraim was paralysed after jumping from a waterfall. A qualified personal trainer, Ephraim volunteers at the Gisborne Police Training Centre. He has adapted gym equipment so anyone with a disability can train. His goal is to empower people through physical strength. Ephraim's personal goal is to open his own gym. I love coming here. Training in the gym is just... Yeah, just a metaphor for my life, really. The determination that I have to show up in the gym every day is just the determination that I have to just get out of bed every day, really. This is my world map. Ta-da! <laughs> Tim Fairhall's not afraid to stand up for his rights. I like to help people who got same needs as me. So I care about people like people who have Down syndrome. I, I enjoy being Down syndrome. You know what? I'm looking at downside. <laughs> Tim rocked the boat by presenting to a government select committee, questioning the rules around KiwiSaver. He argued that some people with congenital conditions can have a shortened life expectancy. Tim boldly challenged the rules on behalf of all Kiwis. I was very nervous. I talked to everyone in the government. But I know it's scary at first, but hey, I did it because I'm proud of myself. His stance led to a groundbreaking change that allows people to access their KiwiSaver before the age of 65. I can't believe it, yay! It's been awesome to be a leader in, in community. 
And we're doing that because we're doing that with best for Down syndrome people and myself. Since the law was changed, Tim's been working hard with plans to travel to Canada. He's going to access his KiwiSaver so he can visit his brother and spend time with a mate. Toronto, Ottawa. I'm so happy because this is one of my biggest dream of all is to travel. And I love meeting people who I love the most. I'm Juanita Willems and I live in Bosgirl, Dunedin and I'm married to Mark and have twin boys, Mitchell and Joshua. How many have you got? Three? Despite a busy life raising two boys with yeah. epilepsy and being almost blind herself, Juanita is a lead person for fostering hope in Otago. So I was an advanced support carer. Got to the point I couldn't see insulin needles. She turned to volunteer work after she left her job due to her lack of sight. So I was looking for something to do and came across Foster Hope. And it's a cause that provides the backpacks for children that are going into foster care. Being a foster child and knowing my story and knowing what I arrived to my family with when I'm getting involved in this. Hey, Juanita. Hi, how are you? Sandra here, just come to give you a hand. Often these kids have nothing. So we provide a backpack with the essentials, so pyjamas, shampoo, soap, toothbrush, toothpaste. To us, it's about letting the kids know that someone cares about them. When Nita has been going progressively blind, the result of an injury when she was a child, she has less than 3% vision. I've faced challenges all my life. This is a big one. It'd be really easy to stay in bed, and a lot of people do. For me, every morning, no matter what I'm dealing with, I get up and I carry on with whatever's going on with the day. Girl, girl. Boy, boy. You know, during the harder days, Foster Hope is what keeps me going. That and my family. I mean, I certainly couldn't continue to do the work that I do for Foster Hope without the support of the community. Definitely want to see every child in the foster system that needs assistance from us being helped. We're so happy they may have a chance at a better life. <laughs> to see all our amazing finalists for 2019, go to attitudelive.com. Make sure you catch all the winners from the night in a one-hour special screening Sunday, 11 a.m., December the 1st. Attitude was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.